Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are at Cedars sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Richard Kim, who is the Director of Pediatric and Congenital Cardiac Surgery. Dr. Kim, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with me today. Great seeing you again. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about the Ross procedure today and you know it's very near and dear to my heart because nearly 20 years ago, I had a Ross procedure performed and I've had a great outcome. No reoperation, no reintervention. My heart is doing great. But for patients out there who may have never heard of the Ross procedure, can you explain what is the Ross procedure? So the Ross procedure is for patients who have severe aortic valve disease and who need their aortic valve surgically replaced. Generally speaking, it's for younger patients, patients who are 50 years of age or younger, or who want to maintain a active lifestyle. It comes at a cost though. The Ross procedure is significantly harder to do, and it certainly takes longer to do also. Basically, the surgeon will move a valve from another part of the heart, we call it the pulmonary valve, and move it to the aortic position. And then we would place that valve rather than the aortic valve with an off-the-shelf replacement. Because of the differences in the pressures that the different parts of the heart see, this combination of replacements has the potential to last significantly longer than your standard aortic valve replacement. Dr. Kim, you just brought up a point about durability of the Ross procedure mm -hmm. and how it can last longer. Mm -hmm. Why might the Ross procedure last longer for patients? Well, particularly for younger patients, the aortic valve is under a tremendous amount of stress. And so for the bioprosthetic valves you most commonly use, these valves generally will only last 10 years or less. There is a mechanical valve solution, but use of this mechanical valve requires blood thinners, and it's something that most people find difficult to manage. It's also important that we're using your native pulmonary valve in the high stress position. Your own native tissue has the ability to adapt over time, so it's not unusual for this valve to go 20 years or more. Most importantly, patients who undergo a successful Ross procedure have the potential for the longest life expectancy of any patient undergoing any aortic valve replacement. Dr. Kim, how do you know if the surgeon you're talking to is an experienced Ross procedure surgeon? Like all things, experience matters, particularly for the Ross procedure, which is quite a complicated operation. The Ross has a number of nuances and potential pitfalls, and you have to have done enough to understand how to manage each of these problems. For instance, if the valve is small, do you have to increase the size of the valve? How do you know if the valve is going to work? Is the valve particularly problematic? Is there a way that you can change your technique to save a uh, maybe a valve that is not quite as good as you would like? You know, we recently published a paper looking at all the Ross procedures done in children under the age of 18 across the United States for over 20 years. More than half of them actually were done in kids who are adult size. And so the, although a direct comparison to adults can't really be made, I think some of the conclusions hold true. So the first conclusion is that across 120 different sites, the overall mortality in adult age Ross patients was less than 1%. So across the United States at many different centers, you can have an excellent outcome. The second conclusion is that at the highest volume Ross centers and these studies averaged a total of approximately six Ross procedures per year. So there are very few centers that are doing more than that every year. And I think that holds true for adults also. Myself, I do about 10 to 15 Ross procedures per year. So if you wanted to know what the absolute number is, who's to say, is it five, is it 10? Is it 25? Is it 100? I think it's, it's perhaps not the right question. I 
think it's a question that you need to discuss with your surgeon and ask whether or not they're truly comfortable with doing the procedure. Dr. Kim, thanks for those insights. I gotta ask you, you mentioned younger patients. I am really curious to know, what is the youngest patient that you've ever operated on with a Ross procedure? Yes, so the, the very youngest patients um, of the Ross procedure are usually patients who we are trying to salvage a valve. For instance, you can be a child born with a congenital problem with a valve, and so their first procedure, which is usually a balloon valvotomy, doesn't really work so well, and so we end up having to do the ROS. So the youngest patient I've done a ROS on is just a few days old. Dr. Kim, fascinating. I didn't know you were doing ROS procedures on children just a few days old. The last question I have for you, and I imagine a lot of folks are thinking this who are watching, Given all that you know about the Ross procedure, what's your advice for a patient or parent who might be thinking the Ross procedure could be the right therapy for them? I, I think the most important thing is for parents or patients to have an open, frank conversation with their surgeon. Ask the surgeon the questions that matter the most to you. Uh, ask yourself whether or not you believe that your surgeon has the ability to do the procedures that you want them to do or that they're proposing to do. And finally, uh, take real good measure of whether or not your surgeon is taking the time to address your concerns and questions. And that is incredible advice to everybody out there watching this. And on behalf of the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, Dr. Kim, thanks so much to you and your team here at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles for doing such great work specific to the Ross procedure and all your other therapies. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.